If you are watching this video, chances are you are probably human. And if you are human, you are probably concerned about being healthy. The world is full of warning labels telling people to be careful about what they consume. Well, we are about to add one more thing to that list, neonics. Neonicotinoids, or neonics, are a class of pesticide widely used on field crops, especially U.S. corn and soybeans. They are also used as a flea and tick repellent on household pets. You might have heard one marketed under the name Canine Advantix. We know they are highly toxic to bugs, but how much do we know about the health effects of these pesticides on humans? In this film, we will be discussing the effects they may have on human health. What could be a more important aspect of human health than a functioning nervous system? Chemicals in a healthy nervous system bind to receptors on cells and help transmit important messages between cells. Nicotine is a neurotoxin that disrupts the signaling process when it binds to these receptors. This disruption makes it lethal to bugs and harmful to humans. Neonics are chemically similar to nicotine, but are different because they do not match the receptors in the human nervous system and can't bind, making them less toxic to human nervous systems. However, they still bind to the receptors in bug brains, making them an infective insecticide. Therefore, neonics are popular because they selectively target insect nervous systems and are thought to have less of an effect on human nervous systems. Scientists reason that this difference makes neonics safer for the human brain, but less is known about how safe they are for other parts of the human body. It has been shown that neonics are poisonous and lethal to humans if ingested directly in large doses, but a more common and less studied occurrence is moderate exposure when directly applying the pesticides, having frequent contact with treated animals, or living in close proximity to areas of application. Even less is known about the effects of long-term exposure to small doses of neonics, such as residues on pets, foods, or in the environment. The effects of these doses are difficult to determine in a lab because it's hard to represent a full human body in a petri dish or animal subject. Scientists have studied the effects of neonics on animals and human cells and suggest that neonics may cause increases in fat tissue, inhibit the immune system, and damage DNA. Most of these studies have been conducted in petri dishes or on rats and mice, so little data is available for direct human applications, and scientists must make predictions based on animal and lab data. Therefore, we stress that any inferences to human effects are speculation and require more research. Currently, the largest amount of research has been done about the effects of neonics on human DNA. Because this area has the most evidence, it's the topic we will focus on in our film. Because DNA is so central to human life and neonics damage DNA, scientists are concerned with the possible results of that damage. One possible result is the development of cancer. If the DNA is damaged in an area that is responsible for regulation of cell replication, it can result in uncontrolled cell division. Those rapidly dividing cells can become cancer and a tumor can form. Scientists are aware of many chemicals that damage DNA leading to cancer. Since neonics also damage DNA, there are fears that they could also be carcinogenic. The following studies provide evidence that neonics damage human DNA and are the grounds behind this concern. These studies were all conducted on human lymphocytes, which are generally thought to be a good representation of all human cells. A study conducted across three universities reported DNA fragmentation at high doses of imidacloprid, a commonly used neonic. DNA fragmentation is bad because without complete instructions, cells cannot function properly. It would be like removing a page from your favorite book. Again, we emphasize that it is hard to predict how much of the chemical will cause harm to a real human body. Authors of the study state that while imidacloprid itself may be less toxic to mammals than to insects, the other chemicals added to the commercial product increase how easily it is absorbed into human cells. Therefore, they suggest this combination may be more toxic than pure imidacloprid and should be used with caution. Four studies we found all reported that human cells exposed to neonics in a lab setting showed chromosome damage. Even more dramatic than removing a page from your favorite book, this would be like removing an entire chapter. In summary, we found that while neonics are thought to be less harmful to human nervous systems than nicotine because they don't bind to receptors on brain cells, 
Data supports the idea that neonics are harmful to humans in other ways, especially through damaging DNA. Furthermore, some scientists fear that the commercial formulations of these pesticides are even more dangerous than the pure compound. Although studies have been conducted in petri dishes and animal models, less is known about direct applications in humans. So, what can you do to protect yourself from the potential harm of neonics? Stop using pet products and crop pesticides containing neonics in your own home and business. Instead, research integrated pest management or other more natural approaches to pest control. Also, spread the news to family and friends about the potential harm of using neonics.